Welcome to the Network Engineering Video Blog. I am your host, Michael Crane. So in this video, we're going to look at changing our um, data source for this router's name, or actually any of our class node names. And before we get started, I, uh, I was using the documents um, I started with this binding source overview because what we want is we want to bind to a class, right? And so I kind of looked at this binding sources overview and uh, <laughs> I kind of messed around for a, a little bit. It's, so if you read implementing a class for binding source, it kind of it kind of takes you down this weird the recommended mechanism is to implement this I notify property changed interface and all this other stuff and and I, I started going down that rabbit hole <laughs> and I'll show it to you but uh, yeah that I don't that wasn't actually necessary so um, so then I also was looking at this document here and this is part of the rabbit hole I was going down is uh, how to specify the binding source, uh, which gives you this, okay, this custom class, and they're uh, implementing all these property changed events, and they're manually, they're manually coding the get and set for the properties. <laughs> and, uh, but this note right here actually is what saved me. <laughs> And I guess we can look at it real quick. It says uh, above example instantiates the object and markup and use it as a resource. If you want to bind to an object that already has been instantiated in code, you need to set the data context properly program programmatically. Uh, and then it says, uh, for example, see this make data available. And I believe that's this tab right here. And, and of course, you know, it's how to make data available for binding in XML. But you have to kind of read all the way down till you get to, oops. Um, if you define, oh, here we go, right here. So it says, however, if you are binding to an object that has already been created, you need to set the data context and code. And, <laughs> and that's pretty much it, okay? Okay, so why am I doing this? Well, the, the title, whoop, as you probably know, for this video is uh, Binding to a Class Object. So, and I, and I know a, a, an object is an instantiated class. So it's, I don't know, is that redundant? I, I, I don't know. <laughs> anyway, uh, maybe I should just show you, okay? So we have our, our class node properties. And if you've been following along in the videos, you're familiar with this. It just had uh, this in there, right? It had, uh, actually these weren't in there. It had index, category, make, model, left, and top, all right? And that was pulled in by our class node, which is this guy right here. And so the, the, these were the properties for our class node, which is our, which is our parent class for our uh, router nodes and switch nodes and that sort of thing, right? So, uh, but the, the name that we're using, let me find the GUI here. So the name we're using right here uh, this router underscore zero was actually a name property in, um, let me find it, in this framework element class. Well, let me, here's class node. Oh, I'm sorry, in this user control, right? Uh, which is, which I believe is a framework element property. But anyway, let's, let's, so it's, it's pulling it in from user control and our main window is using this as, as a key 
uh, for our collection of nodes, right? So I was putting the, the router node object uh, and using the, the name as a key, okay? And, but I wanted to be able to have the user, when we go to edit this, I wanted the user to be able to um, change the name. So I didn't want the, um, where's name in here? Make model, well, it's not even listed in here. Am I missing it? <laughs> anyway, so I, I guess I'm missing it, but yeah. Or maybe it wasn't, oh, here it is up here. I'm sorry, so it's right here. So here's the name of it. But I wanted the user to be able to come in here and change the host name and, and the name that's displayed on the router. Okay, and so I just called the field nickname. I started to call it label, but label's a keyword and, and visual basic, and I, I didn't want to have any um, you know, problems with that, so I just called it nickname. So now, what we've got is, is, if we look in here, we've got our nickname, and I added host name. I didn't really do anything with host name now, so we can just ignore that. Okay. So, uh, let me do a couple diffs, and we'll, we'll see what I changed, all right? Okay. Stop this. All right. I guess we'll start with the main window. Seems like the best place to start and and you can see right here so when we uh, when we do this add router uh, here's the name property that we are taught that we use as a key all right and and then I just I inst I just I default the nickname and the host name to this name property you know for why not, right? Okay. And then I just did some debug stuff. And, and I just did this. I just duplicated this for the switches and the test sets. All right. So that's all the changes that are in the main window. All right. And that's just populating this class node properties, right? Or, or it's initializing it, I should say. Okay. So then if we go to, and we're just gonna look at the router node. So we'll look at the router node XAML. And if we come down here, uh, I did a couple things. One, so on our text block, originally it was just, it's just a text block with a margin, foreground, and it was binding to an element name called XAML name that was defined up here, and we are changing it programmatically uh, at runtime, right? And that probably wasn't the greatest thing to do, but it worked, right? <laughs> so, and that's okay, you know, th th this worked, and it was okay, but like I said, I, I don't want to keep changing uh, this right here, because we use it as a key to do searches on, but I want, like I said, I want the user to be able to change it. So, uh, I gave the text block a, a name so we could uh, access it in the code behind. And then I changed the binding from this element name and our uh, control name to uh, this nickname right here. All right. And that's, I think that's it. Yep. So if we go into our code behind, What did I add here? Now this has got a bunch of comments in it, so you can just ignore it. But the only thing I had to add is this. So here's the name that I added in the um, XAML, right, for that that text block. And then I just set its data context to our properties object. And the properties object is, is instantiated in the in the class node, uh, where is it? Uh, class node. So here, so here's where it's instantiated. So we we have a prop a property called property prop, and it's a class node properties, which is this guy right here. And whoops, 
and um, and that's it. And so that's all this. Where is? Where are we? Uh, right here. Okay, in the router node. Yeah. So I just said, okay, that the the text block label uh, data context is just using this object property, right? And then in the XML, I can just say uh, bind a nickname, okay? And that's and that's, <laughs> that's that's pretty much it. But I'll tell you what, I was and you can and that's why I left the comments in here. I started to go down this this rabbit hole of okay, you know, here we want to you know define all our gets and sets and you know, I forget where the other one was, but it was oh yeah, you had to make all these events and you know implement this i notify change thing <laughs> and I was like going this can't be that hard all right and uh what's funny is we've used this data context before um but i i it, it slipped my mind and I didn't even think about it. But uh, yeah, this, and, and if you're wondering if it works, if it, if it's a true data binding, uh, it does because it is because in our main window right here, uh, here it is. Um, so here's, oh, where are we? Uh, da, 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 da. Canada's children add router. So, uh, oh, yeah, so here's where we're creating a new Cisco router node. So the XAML is getting instantiated, uh, or initialized, I should call it, uh, up here, right? And, and, if, and, and we're changing its name uh, right there, or changing its nickname anyway, okay? And so, and so we're changing it in this property file, and it's getting pushed without any of, any of these events um, down to our uh, XAML, All right? So, uh, and I don't know what the default binding is for this. I, I think our mode, I think it's a two way. Uh, I don't know. I, I think if you leave it blank, it, you know, so if you do like mode equals so you've got default, which I think is if you leave it blank, and uh, then you got one way, two way, one way to source, two way, and I wanted one way, but I decided just to leave it blank, um, so we didn't have any problems. And, and if it defaults to two way, it might we might have to come back and change that later because it just adds overhead, uh, you know, to our program that we don't really need, right? So don't forget, you can support the Network Engineering video blog by donation using a credit card and PayPal or by purchasing products at the Muxall store. Details and links are in the description under this video. Well, <laughs> that's about it for this video. If you like the video, give it a big thumbs up. That helps and hit the subscribe button. That really helps. If you have any questions or comments, post them in the comments under this video. Thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.